，你老公翻咗嚟啊？系，系咪好冇用啊 ？There's a moment in Wong Kar Wai's In the Mood for Love. More than two thirds of the way through the film, when everything that's been unspoken, pent up, held back between Tony Leung and Maggie Chung's characters seems to break free. Until that point, the film is about restraint. These two people who learn their spouses are having an affair begin to spend more and more time together, but unable to act on the feelings they begin to have for one another. In the mood for love is filled with wonderful and painful little moments of longing. But even as their feelings begin to surface for the first time, for Wong Kar Wai, it still seems to be about restraint. How he and the actors approach the scene is a truly brilliant moment. And joining me to talk about it is Goran Stolevsky, writer, director, and editor of the new film *Of an Age*, as well as 2022's wonderful Macedonian folktale *You Won't Be Alone*. It kind of blew my mind because it was the first time I sort of realized what you can do with editing that wasn't about just, you know. Being fancy or showing off techniques, we break down what we love about the scene, how the editing makes it feel like a memory, and how scenes like this influence Goran's work. It feels very wrong to be traveling with that one car ride. I know, right? You want to keep him. You want to keep him handy. We'll get to all of that, but first, here's the moment. Okay, so now that we're appropriately sad, mm, watching mm, yeah,、scene. okay. I'm not. I'm just like, just my eyes are itchy. That's all. Sure. That's all that means. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Um. <laughs> okay. So first of all, congratulations on of an age. I I really enjoyed it. It's it's a really beautiful film, and I we'll get to chat a little bit more about it in a minute. But first, I want to get right to the moment that you that you picked. Um, because I was really excited when I saw that you were choosing this moment from this particular film because I really like the film. Uh, but also, it makes so much sense when I look at at your work.、Uh, but I want to hear from you. Tell us a little bit about、uh, you know what moment you picked and a little bit about what、uh, what you love about it. I mean, obviously, it's funny in terms of the link to、uh, how much to talk about Wong Kar Wai within my actual film. But that wasn't even the first impulse. The first impulse is anytime I'm asked about one moment, somehow my brain goes straight to this. Partly, it may have been because in My undergrad in like the cinema studies portion, like I actually did a presentation on it, and it kind of blew my mind because it was the first time I sort of、uh, realized what you can do with editing that wasn't about just you know being fancy or showing off techniques. It was about like kind of、uh, capturing feelings in,、uh, in a way that was a lot more direct. So much of the film is like with emotion pent up and things unspoken, and. I don't remember if this is the first time it explodes. Certainly, in, in such a vivid way,、yeah. when she cries, and it's someone who's trying so hard not to. I think is what it is.、Um, normally, you know, if,、uh, most films are structured so that、uh, structures so, so that the film is driving towards that moment where the actor finally gets to imagine their Meryl Streep in an Oscar clip, you know, and it's about people watching you cry, and it's presentational. I would argue, whereas this, like, first everything feels very lived in. While being extremely cinematic and quite stylized, really, I think they're both like two of the greatest artists that ever lived. Both Tony Leung and Maggie Chung, but what she does, especially in terms of trying to hold back so much, and but still keep us connected to what's going on inside. Right, right. I mean, there's there's so much restraint 
kind of happening on screen, but also it's so clear that that they're hurting. What happened a lot actually in, in audition, what happens in auditions is, uh, especially with younger actors, they're chasing the pain as this thing that you kind of get to finally experience and show off. Whereas when you live pain, you're trying to get rid of it. You're trying to hide it. You don't want to be seen to be experiencing it. Like this person who is tr really trying so hard, um, partly for herself, partly for the everyone else around her, to hide that. Like when it explodes, it feels so much more real. And the fact that the first time you see her crying, it's really from a distance. So the camera is not even invasive. So you're respecting the fact that she, she, she doesn't want this to be happening. You brought up uh, the editing of it. And that's one I think like, to talk about the nuts and bolts of some of the techniques that, that they're using in, during this scene. Like that dip to black, like they cut to black. Mm -hmm. and you don't even see her start to cry, right? Like yeah, she exactly. start, you dip to black and then you hear them talking again mm -hmm. and you hear her starting to cry. So like, I mean, in talking about not being a showy edit, like what is it about leaving that moment out? Like in the context of this whole film and all the emotions that they're going through, like mm -hmm. what is it about leaving that moment out of her actually breaking down? that that you think works so well well for me it's like how much empathy he's showing towards her um i feel like this moment and every moment in the film is driven by like understanding how she feels and evoking that as much as you possibly can without being prurient or invasive or exploiting this person's feelings it feels very respectful of everything that she's been going through and the way that she's been wanting to handle this the whole time right and because it feels less designed for effect because you know the the, the thing that you know show a crying child <laughs> to make someone cry like you know we all have that button you can push and you can make us cry but the, like ironically as much as you know it's like it involves a lot more direction that you know is visible in terms of when you start to deconstruct the scene um it feels less directed it feels more like uh actually organic and it, emerging from a real thing that is kind of bubbling by itself out of control rather than Set to a set to a boil, and you show like the not where you saying the water boiling. I mean, it's I think it's that sense of it's some, somehow because it feels so connected and driven by her feelings. Um, it, it just feels less like it's done for my benefit, I, and it feels like a more honest, uh, raw and sincere moment. And I think if someone can be that raw, like my instinct is always like it's so much easier to connect with someone who's not presenting a persona, but like. The, the the their core self is kind of trickling out out of their control yeah and then one of the other things that strikes me about this scene is the the last two close-ups of the two of them the little reverse shots that we mm -hmm. see them they're so like her close-up feels more about his hand like you know on her shoulder than it does and then his he just feels so crowded into this frame there's all the space behind him like we, i mean approaching you're shooting a scene like this like you know why would you pack a close-up in like that close to the to the frame for this when i was directing this scene, <laughs> yeah yeah Wait, what were you thinking by the way that's uh i, I mean i guess oh, like how did God. you know <laughs> i, mean, I, I, I to be perfectly for honest for it's a bad I mean, question because like so. <laughs> yeah I, i'm not even sure why i responded to it i just watched it it was like why is he rubbing her shoulder like that that's yeah. Um, well, I also wonder, you know, considering from, um, I, I don't really read many interviews with filmmakers, I probably should. Um, so I don't, I don't think of, I don't even know how I, how I know this, but like just from the little bits of what's trickled out down again, uh, it, like he doesn't really write his films sometimes until on the day. I, I can't imagine that he's someone who like shot lists obsessively and then gets the exact image. <laughs> uh you know uh, lined up on the day and then that that's how you do it i feel like i mean i don't know it feels more found and sometimes like uh, i think i've already been hit by her tears um her grief and like you know the fact that she's crying i've already hit, been hit by it cutting to the close-up i think just to like emphasize it would be unnecessary but like the including the hand in that way is about again to her the hand is the world in that moment isn't it so uh, she, it, I think it's about capturing another facet of that experience rather than just like cutting it for no reason. Um, that's how I'm processing it anyway. And then with him, I mean, there's so many, it's almost like it feels dirty to put it in words. <laughs> I feel like any cinematic moment when you actually start to summarize it in words, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. If, if it could be phrased in just words, it would be prose, wouldn't it? It wouldn't be uh, cinema. And it's like, I mean, there's so many uh, ways you can interpret, obviously, why uh, Tony Luke's character is uh, crowded out of that frame. But, you know, 
obviously feeling overwhelmed while being stoic. I, I guess all that space is about something he's suppressing and pushing away because he's obviously trying very hard not to cry. Um, that's how I would interpret it. But my God, when I phrase it that way, no wonder I'm me and he's one car away. <laughs> right. I would rather just watch a movie and love it. Um, mm -hmm. But the, uh, so in, in speaking of it, just in terms of how the, a scene like this sort of relates to your work, um, like I said earlier, I, I feel like this choice makes a whole lot of sense, uh, you know, coming from particularly looking at, at of an age. And um, so, I mean, what is it at a scene like this, uh, moments like this from, from In the Mood uh, for Love that you sort of gravitate towards and, and how do you see it in sort of manifest in your own work? Like, I think pretty much what I've been saying, the sense that like everything feels very subjective and lived in, um, while also being so, you know, transporting and cinematic, uh, you know, uh, it's not drive day to day life, God knows. Something or these scenes sometimes feels like, um, like the way they will one day, like it feels very present tense, but it feels like it's structured the way that one day it will live on in, in them as a memory. One of the things that I really enjoyed about of an age is that how you portray that really that first uh, that first crush and that sort of young love that you just don't know what to do with and because it but it feels right and also it's kind of terrible and it sticks with you and it's those you know watching these two people on screen and you just want them to say things out loud to each other you know it it's um, it also put me in mind of of you know before sunrise the the scene where they're in the the scene where they're in the listening booth and they're just not quite looking at it. it's it's just that mm -hmm. but to your point about it being nostalgic like that was one of the things i really enjoyed about of an age was that it there's a you know there's a hindsight sort of wisdom to it that it feels like a memory so i anyway i i don't know that i was building towards a question there um i was I'm, hoping i could probably I'm just trail off and let you pick it up <laughs> for sure. that's, uh, that's kind of um i think way to do an interview for me is that like we just trail off into each other's sentences please please um, do your turn yeah i but i do feel like um you know when i am you know putting together a script or a movie i i'm not really i, I try to work off of instinct and then kind of maybe it's uh in polishing it try to kind of figure out what drove to that instinct from you know like a cerebral uh, the cerebral side, but generally speaking, I'm not really thinking consciously of why I'm doing what I'm doing. It's only afterwards when I'm like interrogating decisions that I go, wait, what is the reason? Does it like add up? I can recognize a pattern um, of uh, both in this and in the previous film of trying to construct scenes so they feel very immediate and visceral and present tense, but they're constructed in the way that you will remember them one day and, and time in them flows in the way that you remember them one day. So, so something when you're super present plays out almost in real time and there might be snippets and blips that are like there, there might be little jumps but that's not because you dropped out it's just like this there's something like this just an overwhelming feeling just le leads to like the dvd skipping sense but uh most of it like can happen in, it can happen in real time whereas uh you can go through entire years and it can be for lack of a better term just a montage it's just free-flowing because i think time moves so fast um and Part of uh, like I, I like to kind of create the sequence that way, but at the same time, these moments are preserved permanently, and you're not you're not going to forget them as much as they were like just you know tiny and forgettable. Because also edit my films as well, and that's really important to me. Um, and I don't know how to direct without editing. Um, I, I think um, anyway, that's a, it, it motivates a lot of how I work, and uh, even in terms of constructing a scene on the set, I'm thinking about how it's going to be edited. And because I think it's about how the energy and the feelings will flow for the you know people on screen, but also for the people watching it as they're connecting. Well, that's the old saying, right? You have to make a good movie three times. You have to write a good movie, you have to shoot a good movie, and you have to edit a good movie. So thank you very much yeah, for making three, like, three When you're good writing movies. it, you're writing it with words. Yeah, and then it's yeah. writing it with images. And then like when you're editing, it's literally like the way you're breathing, or the way I'm breathing and the way the actors are breathing is shaping this film all over again in a different way yeah it's yeah. kind of intangible but like and i think with one Kauai especially like i i, I feel like i you know the, the as the air fills their lungs and leaves them i i feel it you know in a way that's so vivid and indescribable um and it became more so than almost any other filmmaker i would say well hey i really enjoyed it thanks for the time thanks for making me watch in the mood for love again or anytime sir <laughs> thank you <laughs> appreciate <Thanks>. it <laughs>